Hallelujah. I thank God for this wonderful opportunity that God has given me to be able to speak tonight or speak this morning in front of you today. God is still on the throne today. Amen. God is still alive today. Amen. I don't want to waste any more time. I just want to go straight into the word of God. Uh, if you could uh, turn with me to Mark chapter 5, verses 21 onwards. It's a very uh, familiar passage, which God has been talking to me for the past few weeks. And I'll read Mark chapter 5, verses 21 onwards. And when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him, and he was beside the sea. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and seeing him, he fell at his feet and implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. And he went with him. And a great crowd followed him and thronged about him. I want to skip the few verses and go straight to verse 35 to continue this story. While he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house some who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. And he allowed no one to follow him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. They came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and Jesus saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And when he had entered, he said to them, Why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with them and went in where the child was. Taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kumi, which means little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl got up and began walking, for she was 12 years of age. And they were immediately overcome with amazement. And he strictly charged them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. Amen. Let's bow our heads one more time in prayer. In front of the word of God that was just, re just read right now. Father God, we come before your holy throne of grace one more time. Father, use me as a mouthpiece, so God, here I am. Use me, oh God. Now my words come out, but let your words come out, oh God. Just like you were talking to me for the past couple of weeks on this passage, oh God, Jesus I pray that this word of God will touch someone, oh God, transform some, someone, oh God, heal some, oh God, Jesus, and break bondages, oh God. Oh God, let your presence be here, oh God. Without you, oh God, there's no point for us to be here, oh God. Let the Shekinah glory of God come down from heaven, oh God, and speak to your people, oh God. The manna from heaven, oh God, come down just like you fed, oh Lord, the tribe of Israel, oh God. I pray that you feed your people today, oh God. Once again, I lift this word in your mighty hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Verse 21, going back. We see that there is a huge crowd around Jesus. Amen. Jesus is doing what he's known for. Jesus is doing what he's you know, what he's here for. He's healing and he's teaching and he's preaching. Amen. He's mending broken hearts. He's, he's forgiving sinners of their sins. And Jesus is becoming popular among the people. Near and far, people are coming to just to see Jesus. Amen. Just as Jesus' popularity is increasing day by day, he's also being hated by the Jewish leaders. Amen. Amen. He's shaking the core of, 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 of the religion. Amen. He's doing things that no man has ever done. Amen. So while Jesus' popularity is increasing day by day, he's also being hated by the Jewish leaders day by day. But the thing is, when Jesus came on this earth, he had a mission. Amen. Just like each one of us has a mission on this earth, even though we're at a finite, we have a short time on this planet earth. Amen. See, Jesus didn't care about the haters. Jesus knew that he couldn't uh, please everyone around him. The mission God has given each one of us. Amen. People are going to hate you no matter what. The way you talk, the way you dress, the way you walk, the way you look at them. People are going to hate you no matter what. But the thing is, you got to fulfill the mission that God has entrusted in you. 
Amen. Jesus was here for the people, and he didn't care about the Sadducees or the Pharisees. He knew he, they were there among the crowd. Not everyone in the crowd was his supporters. Amen. They were there writing down what he said. They were there to question his authority. They were there to judge him. People are going to judge you no matter what. Verse 22. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. I want to pause there for a moment. I was reading that over and over and over. Why would Mark put the title before the name? Why couldn't Mark say Jairus, a man named Jairus, who was a synagogue ruler, came to see Jesus. But instead, he flipped it and he said, a synagogue ruler named Jairus. The title before the name. Amen? There's multiple reasons. But what God was speaking to me and telling me is the importance of who this man is. Amen? He was a, he was a noble man. He was a upstanding citizen in his community. People respected him. People honored him. Amen? When he walked down the streets, people knew who he was. When he stepped into a room, people older than him would stand up out of respect and would offer their seats to him. So why would this respected man come see Jesus? See, like I mentioned before, Jewish rulers, Jewish leaders would only come to see Jesus to judge Jesus. So him coming in the presence of Jesus is a big no-no. Amen? But the thing is, Jairus didn't care. The thing is, Jairus didn't care. He didn't care about the people who was there or the people who wasn't there. People are going to judge him no matter what. So many times in our Christian life, when we come to the church or when we come to the sanctuary, we are so much more preoccupied of what other people think. How we clap, how we worship, how we sing doesn't matter. Amen? There was a woman in the Old Testament by the name of Hannah. She came to a sanctuary just like this, but it was empty because she didn't want to be judged. Amen? And she sat on a pew just like you were. You are right now. And she poured out her heart. She poured out her soul unto God. And she was pouring out her pain unto God. And when she was pouring out Tears came down her face, and no words were formed. No words came out of her mouth. But God fully understood what she was saying. And in the corner, though, there was a priest named Eli. Amen? And he judged her. He thought she was a drunkard and just came and just blabbering. Amen? Even though, children of God, even though you think nobody's watching you, there's always somebody watching you and always judging you. But when you come in the presence of God, what really matters is just between you and God. What really matters is what you pour out to God. Nobody knows the pain and the suffering that you go through. See, Jairus, he was a synagogue ruler, yes. He was a leader among the community. He was a respected man. But the thing is, above and beyond that, foremost, amen, Above the position he held in the church, he was first a father. He was first a father in pain. Amen? See, his little daughter was in bed dying every single day. She was suffering every day. Amen? He had some long nights and even some longer days. Behind closed doors, he was kneeling at her bedside, pleading unto God, God have mercy upon her. God have compassion upon her. She's only young, oh God. She's only 12 years old, oh God. And he's been debating with God, and he's pleading with God, and he's trying to bring heaven down. He went to the synagogue rulers, and they couldn't do anything for her. He went to the doctors and the physicians, and they couldn't do anything for her. Then he gave her medicines, and they couldn't do anything for her. Amen? Amen? He was at her bedside, pouring out, giving out his heart and his soul unto God. While I was meditating on this message, I asked God, God, how did Jairus know that you were coming? How did Jairus know about you? 
what, what came up to my mind was two things. One, it could be one of his colleagues at church, you know, bashing Jesus. Oh, this carpenter's son, he thinks he's God. He's forgiving sins. He's doing this and that, riling up the crowd. Or he could have heard it off the street where people are saying, there is a Messiah coming, the Son of God coming, and he's doing miracles after miracles that no one has ever done. Whatever the reason or however he heard, he knew that this man was his last hope. He knew this was the man that was going to heal his daughter. No matter what it took, no matter how many valleys he had to walk through, no matter if he had to go to hell and come back, he was going to go to this man. Amen? Some of you sitting here today had some long nights. Some of you have been pouring out your heart and your soul, and God has heard your prayers. God has heard your prayers. And the next part in verse 22, Jairus by name, and seeing him, he fell at his feet. Seeing Jesus, he fell at the feet of Jesus. Okay, being in the presence of God is a no-no. But falling at the feet of Jesus... Oh my gosh, tomorrow the headline will say, oh, this, this traitor, this traitor fell at the feet of a man. Amen? Jairus didn't care. Jairus didn't care because the weight that he was holding on, the pain that he was holding on, the suffering that he's been holding on, when he saw Jesus, he said, I can't hold this any longer. Jesus, I need you. Jesus, you are my only hope. You are my last hope. And without you, my daughter is not going to get out of that bed. When you come at the feet of Jesus, strip away the pride, strip away the ego, strip away the pedestal that you've been put, standing on, strip away the title. Yes, we love the titles. We love the title of CEO, CFO, president. I mean, that's great. I'm not shortening that. This man had to go through a lot to become a synagogue ruler. It's not like one night he said, oh, I'm going to be a ruler of the synagogue. No, he had to take years to study and learn to be in the position he was in. But the thing is, he, above that position, he was first a father. A father in desperation. A father who needed his daughter rescued. See, children of God, sometimes what is stopping us from receiving the blessing, sometimes what's stopping us from getting the healing from the blessing is not God. It's you and I. It's our pride and it's our ego. We don't want to strip away the status. We don't want to strip away the status quo. What would people think if I bow down and worship God? Jairus didn't care. Jairus didn't care. Jairus didn't care who was there or who would see him. He didn't care if his colleagues was there. He needed Jesus. What I want to ask you this morning is how bad do you need Jesus? Jesus has never left your side. Jesus has always been there. But the thing is how desperate and how hungry are you for Jesus? Jairus was desperate. Verse 23, and implored him earnestly. He begged Jesus, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her. This man, this synagogue ruler is tight with God, right? We assume he's close with God. But he's asking Jesus to come to his home for the first time. When was the last time you've asked God to come to your house? Oh yes, we got prayer lines. We got messages. We got worship songs Monday through Sunday. No, that's not what I'm asking. What I'm asking is, when was the last time you asked God to come into your house? When was the last time you bent down on your knees and had a one-on-one -on -one connection with God? 
We love to consume a lot. We love to hear the messages day in and day out. We love to listen to the worship songs. And that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking, when was the last time you were able to come in the presence of God on bended knees and you and God? It was just you and God, nobody else. We see Jairus invited Jesus for the first time to his house. Jairus, do you understand what you are asking? Jairus, do you understand that your life is about to change forever? Jairus, do you understand that your life is about to transform? Jairus, do you understand the God of the universe is about to come to your house? Jairus, do you understand what you're asking for? The God of heaven and earth. The God of the universe is about to come. You're inviting him to your house. Verse 24. I love verse 24. And he went with him. Jesus went with him. Jesus could have said, Jairus, my son, um, there's a lot of people here needing me. Or Jairus, my son, please ask Peter or John if my schedule is available. Jairus, I'm kind of busy right now. I'm teaching right now. See, Jesus didn't do that. He went with Jairus. Jesus left the 99 for the one. Jesus left the 99 for the one. When, the, when his children cry out to him, when his children beg him, when his children pour out their soul unto him, Jesus doesn't make any excuses. He goes. He goes. And man, how bad do you need Jesus? How bad or how hungry are you for Jesus? We see Jairus was desperate. And a great crowd followed him and thronged about him. And then verse 25, I don't have a lot of time to talk about it. We see Jesus, while he's walking to Jairus' home, he, he, he also heals a woman that's been bleeding for a while. And now let's go to verse 35. While he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house some who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? I'm a new father. If I heard that, I would have collapsed. I would have collapsed. I don't know what I would do. He was with Jesus. Jesus was coming to his house. Jesus was coming. If his daughter held on for a little while longer, her miracle would have happened. For some of us, we've been a good Christian for a long time. We fast, we pray, we tithe, we give. Yet, when we went to the doctor, we got a report that said stage 4 cancer. We've applied for the college that we wanted, but we got the letter of rejection. We asked for that promotion at work, and we're qualified Yet somebody else got it. Why God? Why me? And I love how Jesus answered. 36. But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. Some of you sitting here today, some, I don't know who I'm talking to today, but God has been talking to me. I don't know what you're going through in life. But God wants to say the same thing. Do not fear. Do not fear. Only believe. I know you've been waiting for years, maybe months to years. You've been praying. And you think your prayers have not been answered. You think God has not been listening to your cry for help. Today I want to remind you, do not fear. Your healing is on the way. 
Do not fear. Your promotion is on the way. Do not fear. Your college acceptance is already on the way. The impossibility is on the way. The miracles are on the way. Just trust Jesus. Just trust Jesus. Verse 37, and he allowed no one to follow him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. They came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue. I want to pause there for a second. A house, a house that's been suffering for so long. A house full of pain and a house full of suffering and a house full of death. <clears throat> Everybody will pass away from the house. Don't go to the house. The house is bad luck. But I want to tell the house today, Jesus is coming. Jesus has entered that house. When Jesus enters a situation, he transforms that situation. What a curse, what used to be a curse, now the blessing has arrived. What used to be pain, now there's healing has arrived. Your miracle has entered the situation. <clears throat> Jesus has entered that house. And when he, verse 39, or oh, verse 38, they came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and Jesus saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. Verse 39, and when he had entered, he said to them, Why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. Verse 40, and they laughed at him. Have you ever had a promise that God gave you? And you shared that promise to someone and people just couldn't believe and they just laughed at you? See, when God makes a promise, he fulfills it. Let me repeat that again. When God makes a promise, he fulfills it. He doesn't go back on that promise. See, in the Old, in the Old Testament, there was a couple Abraham and Sarah, they were old, beyond bearing a child. God promised her, Sarah, that you will bear a child. She laughed. She laughed. She said, even if I'm able to bear a son right now, how can I enjoy that child? Amen? It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how many years has passed by. When God has promised something, he will fulfill it. God has promised each one of you something, and he will fulfill it. She, he said, that girl is not sleeping, or that girl is not dead, but sleeping. Your dreams that you had is not dead, it's only sleeping. The promise that God gave you is not dead, it's only sleeping. Amen? When you thought you lost all hope, I'm reminding you again, it's only sleeping. It's only temporary. It's about to arise. Amen? And they laughed at him. What does Jesus do next? But he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with them inside the room. Sometimes, just like what Jesus did, the toxicity, the negativity, the people who laugh at you or the or the thoughts in your head, sometimes we got to open the door and walk them out. Amen? That's what Jesus did. If you're not going to support the promise that Jesus has for you, the thoughts, ask them to walk out. The people who can't support you, walk them out. Amen? Jesus removed the toxicity from that situation so he could do something. The doubt the anxiety, the fear, the what-ifs in our head. We need to open the door and ask them out. Because in order for Jesus to do something, in order for Jesus to do a miracle, you got to remove the doubt so that the faith can increase. See, we look to the eyes through our physical eyes. But the thing is, Jesus wants us to look to the eyes of faith. But in order for us to look through the eyes of faith, we got to remove whatever is pulling us down. Amen? I would like to ask the praise and worship team to come up on stage. I'm almost 
through. And they laughed at him. Verse 41, taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitakumi, which means little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl got up and began walking. And they were immediately overcome with amazement. You are about to be in amazement. You are about to be a miracle in front of so many people. Your situation is about to turn around. Your situation is about to change. Amen. Jesus has entered your house. And he has awoken the promise that he once gave you. He has awoken the dream that he once gave you. Amen. It's not over yet until Jesus says it's done. I don't know who's hearing me right now. Jesus wants to do something in your life. Jesus wants you to just remove the status quo. Just to remove the doubt. Just to remove the anxiety. Just remove the negativity and come to Jesus just as you are. Just as you are. Just like the song says. Come just as you are. Your sinful nature, your blemish, your full of yourself. Jesus just wants you. Nothing else. Nothing else matters. Just like Jairus. It doesn't matter who's here. It doesn't matter who's watching you. It doesn't matter who's here or who's not. What matters is is you and God. You and God. Just like Hannah, pouring out her heart, pouring out her soul unto God. Just pouring yourself out to God. I pray that God, whatever your prayers are, whatever you've been praying for, whether that be healing in your body, whether that be for a promotion, whether that be for your kids, or whether that, whatever, God is not dead. I just want to remind you today, God is still on the throne. He's still the king of kings, the miracle worker, the way maker, the promise keeper. God has given you a ministry. Fulfill that ministry. No matter the negativity, no matter who judges you, fulfill the promise God has in your life. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but God has been just talking to me this couple of weeks. God wants to do something in your life. May God bless you with these words.